Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Josh and Jason Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast Show. I'm your host, Josh Monday. And if you don't know me, I'm a Christian rapper, devo- devoted husband, father, and army veteran. I'd like to introduce you to my co-host. He's a Christian, devoted husband, and father. What's up, Jason? What up, what up, what up? How's it going out there? What's up, Josh? How's it going, Steve? Good. It's going good. It's going good. So, yeah, I'd like to introduce you to our, our guest. He's actually a returning guest. Uh, he's written a few books. Uh, I, I, um, Steve, can you please name those books that you have and where they can find them? Uh, the first one was uh, a book called Child and Family Advocacy. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. I nice. used to teach off the Cofelt projects, and the kids would say, you don't know who I am. You better ask somebody. <laughs> so I thought, you know, that's what parents need to do. They need to find out what's going on. You just can't just believe these schools and stuff. Yes, yes. And now with this with vir- the virus, people are finding out what's going on in the schools. Oh, yes. Very true, because... Well, they were, they were actually at home, their homeschool, or not at home, sorry, they were Zooming in so they can actually kind of find out what the curriculum's looking like. And that's a little bit that they found out. And yeah. also they're, they're finding out about the actual, uh, the school boards and, and how, how, how um, I, I'm not going to talk bad about them, but maybe tyrannical they could be, I guess. Pretty interesting. Pretty I interesting. served on, a, I was board president for one year and served four years as a school board. That's why I didn't want to talk bad about it. I don't, I don't know much about it and I don't want to say anything bad. I just know some parents that, uh, uh, a, a lot of people that I've been talking to lately that have kids in school are, are they're very, uh, they feel like they're in a very uncomfortable position. So yeah, okay. it's tough, but, uh, all right. And, uh, well guys, we're going to be talking about, uh, some very interesting stuff here, stuff that I honestly, I did not really, uh, get to dig into until Steve told me about it. So let's go over our Bible verses for, for this. Uh, I got a few verses. Uh, it's going to be Luke 17, two, it'd be better. It, if it were better for him that a millstone her, were hanged around his neck and he cast into the sea, then he should offend one of these little ones. We also, and, uh, God reaffirmed it in Matthew 18, six, it said, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me, it were better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. So guys, we know that children are a gift from God. Uh, he says it in Psalms 127.3. or one twenty seven three. He says, children's are a heritage from the Lord and offspring and reward for him. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to be talking about CPS, Child Protective Services, and the connection between CPS and child trafficking. And uh, Steve, um, can you give them a little bit of your background on teaching and the school board and all that stuff? I think that's pretty interesting. That's, I know you know a lot about it if you've, if you've been involved in that. Well, I graduated from ASU with a bachelor's degree in 75 and then finished and got my master's in 78. Started teaching as a physical education teacher. The next year, I realized that physical education was leaving schools fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, They were not filling those positions. So I jumped back in and got my master's. And then, so my master's is in special education. Oh, so nice. That's what I taught. So you got a big heart. You got a big heart and you have a lot of patience, it sounds like. And that's beautiful. Well, that's again, beautiful. If, you, if you give kids the respect and you talk to them in a way that they can understand, yes. rather than just ordering them around, you'll do a lot better. I uh, some of the hardest teaching, I think, is kindergarten. Those kindergarten, first, second, third grade, they just kind of scare me. <laughs> I had one of the, the group of kids that I really liked was the emotionally disturbed kids. Mm. And I never had one touch me. I was never, nothing was ever inappropriate. Yeah. I, these are kids that everybody's like, how do you? how do you work with those kids? I said, I don't have to change their diapers or fix them. Clean, yeah, body nose or stuff. I could, I yeah, do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, amazing. So then I taught at the high school, that was elementary PE, then the high school level. Uh, then I got into uh, community colleges. Wow, and community colleges were like evenings and weekends, yeah, kind of make ends meet as a teacher. Yeah, leader. the salaries are pretty poor, but again, you, you know, you're not going to put money into something that's not working or it's leaking yeah 
Uh, then I taught at the University of Phoenix for 20 years, part-time in the evenings and weekends. Wow. Uh, I wrote that one book, Child and Family Advocacy. They used it for 10, 11 years at the community college level. Uh, mm. So social workers and people that wanted to get into the field could understand what parents are feeling. That's amazing. That's really awesome. So guys, uh, check it. Yeah. Check out his books. Um, the other, can you, can you tell them the other book that you have? I know it's, uh, I can look uh, it up. That know. was that one. The, the next one was, uh, oh, was I, that's, uh, it's okay. it was titled I shame not Isham's in the civil war. Okay. There so it is. That's when I was talking 210 about. 210 Isham's that served in the civil war 50 in the Confederacy side. Uh, so there's a lot of my history that goes back. There was an Isham out of Vermont that provided the meat for George Washington's army at Valley Forge. Mm. So those are the types of things I love to go back and find out or help other people track the stuff. Amazing uh, stuff. Yeah. And the other yeah. book that I just finished was A Mor Moral Certainty. And I think that's the one we talked about last time. Yes. Guys, okay. check out our episode with uh, it's the, it's about the Kennedy assassination. It went really yeah. well and people loved it. And Got great, uh, a lot of views and stuff on uh, spot Apple, Apple and Spotify, and yeah, it's great, man. Yeah. Uh, definitely. So, well, let's get into this. Uh, let's get into this, and um, you know, and we started. I want to say that uh, I myself have had a bad experience with CPS, so I don't like. I don't like them at all. I don't like. I don't have. I don't. I don't like them. I don't like the way they deal with stuff. I don't like the way they get pushy. I don't like the way they come into your house. I don't like the way anything they how they how they do things and they don't even do them correctly. They're only doing them now because they got messed up because they 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 they, they didn't go check up on some kids they were supposed to check up on, and they they missed a boat on that and some kids died and now they want to make sure that they touch base with everybody. But I'll tell you right now, I don't I don't trust them. I don't like them. The way they come and ask questions, they they ask leading questions to kids. Uh, it's very embarrassing the way they they do it. And uh, I for one don't have one ounce of respect for them. So well, I'm not downgrade them and point out names and who it was, but yeah, the way they rounded themselves up and then how they came over my house and 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 went through my privacy was very wrong and it was over some stuff that wasn't even wasn't even a part of wasn't even lawful I feel like but it was over med medical stuff for my child and I don't I don't understand how it all got to them but they come over my house at like 10 o'clock at night you know with the police knocking on my door asking questions about you know if if my child is being neglected and I'm like hey you can come on in. Look, 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 it's cool. You guys come in, but I don't like the first. I, I, I told them, you know, you come on in, but I don't like the way you're approaching this already. So mm. they, got little, you know, they, they, they got a little uh, not heated, but it's just the way the, the way I, I, I just don't respect the way they did it because I had to work early in the morning. And so yeah. Yeah, let's get into this. So this is cool. So this you'll see. You'll probably see some. I'm going to believe it. Yeah. You'll see <laughs> some of the things that happen to you that you don't know who happened uh, yeah. as, as far as their behaviors and actions. Uh, I've been doing this for 47 years. Uh, I pulled up some statistics so you kind of get an idea. Uh, November 20, 2021, Arizona had, this is, these are kids that are in CPS custody in foster homes. Okay. Uh, 213 are, are missing right now. And then there's 31 that are missing or abducted. Oh, geez. No police reports. There's no detective branch that is assigned to find these kids. Uh, this is not a, it's a difficult job. And especially because they're rushing, they're hurrying. They don't have very much experience. Most of these social workers, CPS workers, are in mid 20, 24, 23, mm. you know, and if they're older, they're up into like 40, 45, 50. Yeah. Uh, so that, uh, when I looked at the website uh, today, there's 174 uh, full-time employees that have not been filled. Those positions are gone. 
So wow. if you're thinking, okay, look at the numbers. You got probably 15 to 30 kids on a load. Yeah. Okay. So each each social people, worker. Yeah, each worker has 15, 15 to 30. 20. Yeah. That's how many social workers and kids that are not yeah. getting what they're supposed to be getting. Yeah. Uh, in Arizona, the agency turnover is 3.4%. But when you look at the actual people, the CPS workers, the ones that came to your house, uh, over a 12 month period, they had a 48.87% uh, turnover. Wow. So you wow. think about any business or anything that you've run, a basketball team, whatever. Uh, if you have half your team gone at the end of the year by, the, by 12 months, yeah. You're having to retool, get people to come in and those types. And of also, things. also you could tell how much dedication they had to their job. So if you have loyalty and you are committed to your job and you're committed to these kids, you're not going to just, just leave them, you know? So those kids, those 30 kids that maybe they had, and then they ended up leaving halfway through the year or, you know, eight, uh, uh, three fourths of the year, they don't have any dedication to these kids, which is terrible, you know, and the kids get left with another social worker. Let's say they keep turning over and then you get another one. The kids feel like they're left out. That's probably why they run away because they feel like nobody cares about them. And, and you know, that's that's part of the. They're getting abused as well, dude. Mom, you know, I know people that have taken in kids and, and those kids aren't. Aren't well-rounded at all. You know, they're like very, very into certain stuff. That's, you know, you know, Josh, like, you know, mom's yeah. taking kids in and. And it was, uh, it turned out to, they turned out to be into, into, you know, pornography or whatever it was that they're, they're just. Yeah. At a young age. Yeah. And I know guy and I know guys that have been in the, that have been in a foster care before personally that, you know, they don't, they're like, Hey man, that stuff is not, it's not like what you think it is. You know, it's not all like you go to your family and, Oh, I love you. We found our child, our love child for the rest of our life. Yay. They like that. You know, and not, it's not always fairy tale happy endings. You start going through six or seven homes. You're talking, yeah. You've been through your kid that's been through ten different homes, and three of them have been super abusive. Two of them have been, you know, you you don't even know what's going on anymore. This is, this is, it, it, you're you're talking, you're losing kids in the system, and then you lose kids out of the uh, losing kids to the system, then you lose kids in the system. Yeah, misplaced. Yeah. And, and, and the, the whole thing, I think, I don't want to, I don't want to get too crazy, but the whole thing, if you guys think about it, it's the devil uh, into that home, you know, uh, causing the drug addiction on the parents, causing the, the parents, the domestic violence, that the devil is in that home and that the dad's not being a spiritual leader. The dad's maybe out doing drugs. The mom is the drinking, the violence. And that's really what's causing these kids to be in the foster care system in the first place. So uh, and see, that's, that, that's a reasonable uh, assumption that's what cps is supposed to be doing yeah uh, upwards of 75 percent of the kids are taken for neglect that's an extremely subjective you know well you don't have a hat on jason gosh so yeah. are you being neglected <laughs> ridiculous this stuff. i'm about to go grab my hat right now no just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. i feel yeah. left out I, I talk about this in terms of, of a game. Okay? Yeah. Yes. The yes. game is played in secrecy behind a false narrative of confidentiality for the child. In reality, the confidentiality is to protect the state actors who carry out activities to take children for valid reasons and for invalid reasons. Yeah. Uh, there's a, I got a list here of, of some of the things that I've, Whatever I'm talking about, I have experienced, uh, worked, helped the parents. Uh, yeah, the that's system. what I'm saying. Steve's got 40 years of, of dealing with kids uh, from all the way from kindergarten all the way to college. So, I mean, I'm sure you've had so many different experiences throughout the years. And that's why I think it's this is a perfect show for you. You know, I, I, definitely. The first one is child abuse. Nobody yeah. wants to have a child being abused physically anywhere. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, a valid reason. Next is neglect. And that's mm -hmm. one that I always have a hard time with because it's so vague. You might think it, you know, it's uh, okay. And you, others people will say it's not. Well, think about this, Steve. 
you can have with what you know the with this medical thing they're pushing so much this jab they're pushing they could literally go to a point where let's say they have two to five kids need to have the vaccine to enter school they could literally make that something where they say well you're neglecting the kid you know because i feel like you're endangering the kid now i'm going to take the kid or let's say someone has covid in the house right and then the kid comes home and they're like, oh, you're, you're bringing your kid around someone with COVID. Well, we're going to have to take your kid. That's neglect. So it's even getting very strict at this moment. So uh, with the, with that whole neglect thing. So yeah, the, the, you're right. It is vague. <laughs> it's really vague. Another reason why kids get involved with CPS is there's custody battles. Yeah. Uh, the worst thing that you can do as the spouse, no matter how much you hate your husband or, or wife, that you're breaking up and everything else uh they cps loves that stuff because they get yeah. you talking about her and her talking about you and the next thing you know there's neglect or supposedly abuse but we have to investigate while we do that we'll put them in uh all right the next is the state economy if you sit down and figure out how many people are working for on one kid okay hours and hours of that uh it's it's part of our economy in arizona i mean it's a billion dollar more than a billion dollar business here in arizona in every state right i'm just not picking on arizona uh, i tend that way because i it's so close a billion dollar business what's a billion dollar business the the foster care industry oh yeah oh yeah uh Wow, that's but that's, that's one way you, the, the families get sucked into the to that. This is part of the economy. People want yeah. jobs, and, and uh, they want the fourteen hundred a month. They have psychi- a month. psychiatrists, <laughs> psychologists, therapists, mm. uh, physicians, psychiatric people. It's all of these people working on these cases, and mm-hmm. the, the communication is not real good. There's rush and that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next is federal funding. This is an incredibly, uh, incredibly large financial windfall for states. Yeah. Uh, they don't even come close. What, whatever you spent on your child, okay, if you wrote all that down, you don't even oh, get 50% of that for the kid that's yeah. in. CPS custody. Yeah. So if you spend a hundred dollars, they only spend fifty dollars on that. Yeah. Issue. Yeah. Uh, so federal funding and employment. Uh, then some of these are getting a little rough. Uh, mm-hmm. Adoption pool. Some of these kids I've seen that they're being adopted before CPS is even. I mean, the paperwork is being done oh. for this kid to to to. Be taken. They're already, they're already putting them out. They're yes. already like basically putting them in adoption Everybody already. Wants them, they pick them up. Wow. Wow. Uh, so there's a pool of that. Next is pharmaceutical drug trials. There's there's black black label drugs or drugs that are being uh, experimented with. Well, there's no parents. Oh, and we just talked about this. And stuff. They just work for this. They're not doctors. They don't do that. So I've seen actual documents that show these black label drugs being given to these kids. We just talked about this yesterday on our show. Uh, they actually, Dr. Dr. Uh, Dr. Fauci actually did it when he was doing the AIDS, um, when he was doing, when he was testing the AIDS medication out. I believe that that's what the gentleman on our show was talking about. He researched it and said that they, they went to an orphanage because there was no parents that could, that could say yes or no to them doing the trial. And some of the people actually, I mean, I guess some of the kids actually uh, had major complication and some of, some of them actually died from it. So that's crazy you brought that up, Steve. Wow, that's very interesting yeah. that you brought that up. Yeah. This, this, you know, the roots go all the way out on this stuff. Mm. Next, physician error and medical malpractice. The fastest way to get rid of a medical malpractice uh, situation is to call CPS, set that parent up and get them to get them blame, blame them, blame them to that they did something to the parent. 
Mm. Uh, and that's pretty common. Uh, your kid is in the hospital, something happens, a mistake. Break, break his arm or, or something. Or they even mm -hmm. tell the parents uh, uh, they have a risk uh, branch of, their, of the hospital. Uh -huh. And they come in and they work with the doctor to uh, try not to have any responsibility for what happened to the kid. And so uh, that's one that's rough. And then medical research. Uh -huh. Like you have the black label drugs. Uh, so that's kind of uh, a beginning of the game, so to speak, to, to kind of yeah. know. And that's the evil. That's evil that you're exposing right there, man, with the with the medical uh, research that they're doing on them, the, the black label drugs, all that stuff is that's 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 evil enough right there to just be like, man, that's dirty, but it gets even deeper, it sounds, than than this. So this is oh, just yeah. the top you said. So uh <laughs> Next thing we could we should probably talk about is who who the players are, who's that, who is these, and who are they really working for? Yeah. So uh, every state has an attorney general. The attorney general is not; they're not. Their job is to protect state employees and to protect state agencies. Their job is not to help you. Their job is not to see you get justice. That's not their role. Yeah. But you would think, oh, he's a Arizona or Kansas uh, attorney know, general. Attorney yeah. general. They should be making sure everything is ethical. But again, they're not on your side. Yeah. Next is child protective services. They're coming in there not necessarily for a valid reason, but sometimes they are. But I'd say a great number are invalid. But they yeah. should never be doing that. We had a program here in Arizona, and it was a wonderful program. We took Maricopa County, the largest geographic county in the country, and they divided it up into four sections. Mm -hmm. And all the provider agencies in each section had contracts. So you got to, your kids are not going to school. I go I'd meet with your wife and say, well, how come they're not going to school? Well, we don't have a washing machine or a dryer, and I can't afford soap and everything else. So that that team that does that quadrant uh -huh. was would get them a, a donated washer or dryer. Oh, There's all man. kinds of people in the community that want to help and do those type of things. And that's and that's good. That's a, that's oh, like yeah. that's what that's the type of stuff that should be happening. When they, when they started some of the cutbacks, that was the first thing to go. Something mm. that's working, you know, get rid of something that doesn't work and try yeah, something yeah, else. Yeah. Jeez. The CPS supervisor, uh, this is a person, again, they're there to carry out the duties and responsibilities of managing the CPS uh, case manager. Uh -huh. You know, it's, when you go to school for a certain, to be a social worker, there's no class in teaching you how to manage people how to oh, interview, no, how to not. talk to people uh, and manage them and administrate yeah. them. But none of these young people have that ability. They don't have the experiences. Yeah. Uh, the next is that CPS case manager. They're very young. The turnover is 50, 60, 80%, yeah. depending on the state. Uh, it's, it sounds like when the CPS comes in, they're, they're literally like, a detective that's interviewing someone that they're that they're interviewing for like a murder where they're just trying to lead you into questions and then they're trying to find a crime maybe if it's not even there and they're just trying to find something so that they could maybe get the kid it sounds like you know that's exactly it's what they do they, they do that they do that so they do that right in front of me they're doing that interviewing my son and asking me and asking him questions like if he if oh does your dad touch you and my son's like, of course he touches me. Oh, how? Like in a special spot? Like, does he does he have a special spot he touches you? And he's there. He's, my son's like, no, he just hugs me. You know, he's, he loves me. Oh, does he kiss you? Yeah, he kisses. Oh, he uses. He, you guys kiss each other. How do you guys kiss each other? You guys kiss in the dark. It's like, dude. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's son, you're leading my son, and they're like, oh, you step out here. You don't, you don't, you don't listen or or talking. I was like, he's a minor. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna sit right here and listen to what you're telling because I don't. I don't like the way you're talking to me or my son. So they they just 
It's 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 seeking to watch. And they come back two weeks later when you're not home, start talking to your wife, talking to everybody else. They come back when you're not around. Then you come back and they, they come back like a week later after that. Same thing, foot in the door. Hey, we want to see what's going on here. You're like, dude, this is not like this is, and it's like we're not, not even coming to a house that's that's full of drugs and and like I don't look like 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 I like I've just got done, you know. You know uh, <laughs> You know my 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 carburetor at three in the morning. No, I'm not doing. That. I'm just you know, I'm, I'm taking. I'm going to work taking care of my kids, and they're like, well, I want to like you said, they want to find a problem. They're trying to find the crime. Find that's not even there. There's like there's nothing going on. They're like, what oh, I'm saying, bro. Are you guys doing drugs or drugs going? They're like, no. We want you to leave because we want to go to bed to go <laughs> go to work tomorrow. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well. Good thing you Thanks had to be the CPS you. investigator. Uh, we had a governor, uh, I can't remember her name. She was the, uh, she worked for the Clinton. Uh, okay. uh, she became the. the Who's governor of Arizona? What was this? Oh, you're in Arizona? Yeah. Uh, Oh man, I can't remember that. Anyway, she she came in, and I think she realized. I knew her. I worked with her. I had her in my home. Uh, oh. And so she came, became governor. And what she did was, she said, "Take the child now, and we will let the courts sort it out later." So. You know, you don't go to prison until we sort it out whether you should be the prisoner or not. Was it Jan- Janice Brewer? Was it uh, Janice Brewer, uh, Steve? Oh, uh, no. It wasn't yeah. Janice Brewer. Oh. She's, a, Brewer? she's a president of one of the big universities in California. Okay. I can't think okay. Of it. It'll come to me later. Okay, no problem. Next is a CPS contracted therapist. These are like piecework, okay? And if I don't like your work, say you're laying tile and I don't like your work, I just don't hire you anymore. But if you do what I want you to do, even if it's not right, okay? So the the contracted therapist, they know if they don't go along with what the CPS workers are talking behind their backs, uh, they're not gonna get any more uh, kids to counsel. Yeah. Okay. And the same with the, the psychologist. Mm-hmm. If, if you start getting these kids back into their homes and healthy and stuff, that's not what, you know, that's, that's not what they want. From them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the, it was some of these monkey game, monkey playing games. Like for example, Arizona, we had a expert witness that comes from California. She's mm-hmm. licensed in California as a therapist. Mm-hmm. She would come to Arizona, okay? And she would practice here. Well, our laws uh, uh, don't really completely cover that position. So she would come here and then work on a case and then go back to California. If she did something wrong, you'd go to the state board of psychology and you'd file a complaint. They turn around and say, well, she's not licensed here. She's not licensed here, so we can't do anything about this. I call call California to their people. I say, this is what's going on. Well, we can't do anything. When you get a ticket in Arizona, you pay for it in Arizona. So if she's doing something illegal over there, that's your problem. So it's, it's a dead end to help them. Yeah. But that was the situation. The wow. guardian ad litem. This is an individual that is, uh, they're usually uh, maybe, maybe close to retirement or, or enjoy doing this type of thing. They're supposed yeah. to be the eyes and ears of the court. Okay. They're supposed to gather the information. Most of the time, more often than not, they don't ever see the kid until they're in the courtroom. So if you're going to tell me about my kid and you've never seen him except in the courtroom, you don't have a clue what's going on. No, definitely not. There's other monkey business going on with 
with the treatment of the child or the therapist or other people, it, it uh, comes back. But again, yeah. there's no recourse against that person. Yeah. Then this is in Arizona. I don't know what they have this position, but we had a, uh, the parents call her the, uh, the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is a point person. So I'm your, I'm your state senator. Mm -hmm. So you want to come to me, well, I tell you, I can't talk to you. Because if I talk to you, then the attorney general is going to be mad at me and I'll lose my job. So it's, there's all these little so the senator, the senator would say she, she's not going to be able to talk to you because she'll lose her job from the, the attorney general. Yeah. You, they send okay. all these, all the parents that are mad or upset or angry or hurt. They go to this one person and they, they tell them, well, you know, you got to give CPS time. You have to do this, you know, you know, and so the only senator, you're, a parent, you're a parent and your, your kids in child protective services and you're, you're, you're trying to get them like basically trying to get them out and they're, they're giving CPS more and more and more time you're saying, right? Well, what they're doing is, is not allowing you to head to go to your Congress, your uh, oh, the your legislature. Yeah. Okay. So the legislator that covers your area, if you went to, yeah. if you went to them about your situation, normally you'd be able to tell them, you know, what is happening. Yeah. And they don't get involved in that single case, but they can tell, they can take the information that you're giving them and then check on it. Not the yeah. kid necessarily, but the yeah. process that's not working or broken. Yes, for sure. Uh, most states, if not all states, have an ombudsman. Supposed to be a government person that can go and help you navigate some of these things. Again, in Arizona, it's more of a... Uh, Kind of like, well, you've been good and you're a veteran and, and these other things and stuff. And so you get the job. Yeah. Uh, every time I've ever gone to Bob Budsman here in Arizona, all I get is the runaround. But well, that has to go through CPS. Well, <laughs> that's not helping us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> law enforcement. Talk, if you ever get a chance, talk to an officer, a policeman, police woman. Okay. Talk to them off the record and say, what do you think about CPS? You know they're taking kids that shouldn't be taken, right? And they'll tell you, I don't wanna know, don't tell me nothing. Yeah. Well, they don't want anything to do with this. They know that some of these on. kids should not be taken. Yeah. They know it. But they know Ugh. that they need to follow the, the, the game. Yeah. The law enforcement, you can't go to the governor's office because they'll send you to the ombudsman's office or they'll send you back to the gatekeeper. Uh, and the, the state legislators, they're, uh, they're not allowed to talk to you. So once, so basically you're like, okay, guys, so once your kids get stuck in CPS, it's like a web that, and it's, it's so hard to get them out and you have nobody to go to. Talking to your governor, you can't go to your governor, you can't go to your attorney general, you can't go to your state legislator, you can't talk to law enforcement, you can't talk to anybody. You're just going to be basically on, on a treadmill trying to get your kid out, is what you're saying. Now, you get a lawyer. If they would have kept your child, you get a lawyer. Your child would have gotten an attorney, and then you would have gotten an attorney. Well, back to that same problem. If, if that attorney gets your kid back and gets them looking bad, they don't want that to happen. <laughs> okay. No For so sure. Gonna You're going to have a top notch lawyer ready to go. And you, and then usually the, the people that when they take your kid, usually you're probably in a bad position financially anyways, so you can't even get a lawyer. But again, you know, off the record, it. you talk to an mm -hmm. attorney and they'll tell you, Oh, hell no, I'm not going into the kitty court. Oh, there's yeah. no rules in, in, in this stuff. Uh, there's no accountability. It, it's oh, just it's, a mess. It, it sounds like yeah, it's a mess. Uh, yeah. So again, you know, you have to fight, mm -hmm. and uh, it's sad because you come across. I don't know how many times I've seen where the mom they take the kids. There's no support for the mom, and the woman disappears 
they find him dead, you know, in California or Arizona desert or the girl, the, the girl that gets taken. No, the mom, kid? the oh, kid's the mom. gone. CPS has them. They, they can't fight well, to get the child back. There's an, so there's an example. There's an example of a lady that uh, she, she put her kid in a home. It was, it was child protective services home. She actually voluntarily put her in there because she was being disruptive and she put her in the, in the place there was actually, um, there was like walls that were like eight feet tall and there was barbed wire around them. So it's like, there's, she's thinking she's going to be fine. She just put him in there because the police officer said, hey, your kid's being like disobedient. This I, this is something I recommend. She put the kid there and it was over a holiday and the, the girl ended up disappearing for an entire year because, and she got trafficked, you know, sexual, sexual, yeah. uh, sexually. Um, so That's the where a lot was, of these kids are going. You know, they say that 80%, 80% of the kids that go into CPS or foster care after they turn 18 end up uh, being sexually trafficked. Or, so that's, it's interesting, man. It's crazy. <laughs> this is like in 2008 or 2009 that I have these statistics, guys. I don't have these from right now. It has some but. statistics on that. I think I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to do this. It's probably, it's probably a, dude, that's crazy, man. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either, bro. Like I, I, I uh, it was called, it was on a, it's called Buzzsaw. It's like a, they, they kind of do conspiracy type stuff. And uh, uh, Roger Stone's son is the, is the host. And he, and he had somebody on that she was talking about this. It's crazy. Dang, man. So, so if you, you go to, so the, it's true. So that's, that's real then. So foster care, if you, if you don't find your dream family, you're getting trafficked. <laughs> you know, that's, See, and that's what, you know, the, the, the media is not going to go in and show you the family that was a the foster home where the kid was being abused. They're no. not going to show that. They always show. So it's hard for me because I know a lot of these people and I know this is an incredible foster family. Uh -huh. This lady brought these, you know, five kids into her home and she's raising them and she's going to school meetings and everything. It's fantastic. Yeah, uh, that works. That's a system yeah. that works when that happens. For every, yeah. But for every one of those, there's several that are nothing like that. They're trying to, well, a lot of them are probably trying to get that $1,200 for each kid and they have so many in their home, you know, maybe five kids in the home trying to, or four oh, yeah. kids to try to get the paycheck. They could barely keep them afloat. Yep. What well, is getting a paycheck? They, have, the they might have boyfriend paycheck. That's they, might, all they might have boyfriends coming in and out that are, you know, maybe bad like that. You know, they, they like kids. And what, what do you think happened to that uh, that kid? That's why CPS got so uh, started cracking down so much is because they didn't they they're they were being uh, told that there was abuse going on in a, in a home. I forgot what the kid's name was. It was just recently. It was like probably about a few months ago. It was in, it was in California. And the kid uh, was being put in a cage. He was being beaten. He was, he was like, like, like all the time. And it was the boyfriend's mom. The mom had the kid and the boyfriend was going on beating, beating the kid. And, and I guess he beat him to death. It was, uh, it was Gabriel Fernandez, right? That's, yeah, that's, that's what it was. was. He beat him to yeah. death basically, man. And, 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 and CPS was supposed to go over there like, Numerous times they were called, never showed up, and now they show up to every call. For now, a while, everything. Yeah, for, for a while, while yeah. they will. But it'll. Oh, they do. Have, they have a. They come. They come to your house no matter what. It's kind of like domestic violence now. If it's domestic violence call and there's there's some going because that kid was beat because it was going on for months, not just like days. Or this is going on for months. And they were being called and notified and notified and notified. And then they never sent nobody out there. And I guess they did. And they didn't really follow up on anything. And it, it got bad because that kid got beat to death by that guy. Like yeah. he just stood there and was just mad one day and just beat the it's crap. Terrible. It's terrible. And I, you know, I've been fingerprinted for years and years, as long as back as I can remember, 40, 50 years. Uh, I have a clean background education and everything yeah. uh, if i call cps you would think okay this is the ideal person he has a background in behavioral health a background in education special education he was a principal three different times on the school board 
all kinds of stuff. They won't take a, if I say, okay, I need to give you a report. They'll say, well, okay, what's the kid's name? Well, they can look it on the computer and they see already that they're in the system. Well, yeah. We already have them in the system. We don't, we don't need you. Well, you do need me. This is, this is being, ha this is happening in the foster home. Well, mm -hmm. no, we'll take care of it. I said, wait a minute, you're going to tell me that you're not taking? So what I've learned to do is that I will take the information and I will give it to everybody. I'll send it yeah. to the CPS workers. I'll send it to, to everybody. And so that, that is out there. Um, yeah. and I'll, I, I'll call, I'll make the call and then I'll do a write up on it. And I used to, when I was a supervisor of case managers, uh, mm -hmm. uh, mental health case managers, that's what I would have them do. So that there couldn't be any monkey business of, of trying to pull somebody. So, pull so this is when you were basically teaching. So this is when you were like teaching the kids, and then you, you you found out something was going on maybe in the foster home, or or did did you? No, you well, there was there was one case I was working on, and the child was being abused. Uh, oh. She was being uh, forget how it was. She was being groomed. Okay, it was a woman case manager and she was being groomed or grooming the, the young, different young girls. And this had been over a couple of years. Uh, nobody would do anything. Wow. You know, it came out in court. Uh, yeah, it just, Jeez. people say, oh, that couldn't happen, that couldn't happen. Well, you know. <laughs> oh man, they, they said that the, it's, they said that the, the 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 child sex trafficking industry is 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 making more money than the drug and and the illegal uh, firearms uh, industry put together. You know, if you think about it now, they're kind of tapped in, just like the drug and the cartel and everything. Like that. They're tapped into everything. They're tapped oh, into dude, they're tapped into every little market, every little every little camps. Uh, uh, you know, even even churches, man. You know, yeah. they're. Everything they, they they got their little hands and everything. Even big mega stars, even even if they don't even know it or not, that that you know that that invest money in companies. Sure, they don't even know that the money is going to. There's companies out there that are probably you know fronts for whatever it is, and they probably traffic kids too. You don't even know what you're putting your money. You don't even know what your money is going into right now. Whatever your bank is investing in, you gotta you gotta look into that stuff. But that's yeah. why they had to kill that guy. They had him in one of the. Oh, Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein. Louis yeah, the guys in a place where nobody should be able to get to him. Bam, he's <laughs> this dead. Is, yeah, right now we live in an upside down world, Steve. You know, it's it's yep. it's just it's upside down world. It's like um, they took every <laughs> single thing on that on that gentleman. They placed all the stuff that was going on and they put it all on that gentleman. And then they had him killed. You know, so that's all it was. I mean, there was politicians on the list. There was uh, Prince Andrew. There was major people. Bill Clinton. Even Donald Trump was on that plane. Uh, even uh, Nick Cannon. Uh, oh, it's Nick Cannon. I'm sorry, not Nick Cannon. Sorry, Nick Cannon. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> it wasn't Nick Cannon. I'm sorry. It was. It was Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker was on there. There was a whole list of people you could find out that that was on that that plane going to an island where they're taking kids and I mean girls that are very young, you know, 14, 13, and having them give massages to these politicians. I'm pretty sure, there was other. I'm pretty sure there's there was some boys too out there that want some 12 year old boy with small hands. Yeah, hand. I know. And they they would have that dude would have cameras so that they, he can use it as blackmail, you know. And he and this guy Jeffrey Epstein had several. I we could do a show on it sometime, but. Had several different passports from Israel to here to here. Uh, the, it was just a big web of network, and it's and it's that's the big part. We we talked about also like uh, the jo where's Johnny? I don't know if you remember that, Steve. Uh, back in the day, where's that, Johnny? That the police, that the police involved too. So now you can't even go yeah. to your local police because you don't even know if they could be involved in. Because like you said, uh, Steve Steve was saying about how like when. You go and talk to them about the CPS. You take, go talk to police officers about CPS. They don't want to get involved in that stuff. Like you said, they don't want to touch it because they know what could be involved in that. They could have politicians involved. You could have. It's above their pay grade. That's what it is. It's, that's, it's just like in the military. They're just looking a blind eye to it. They're making, you know, they, they're, getting, they're, they're, getting, they're getting laced with money too. They're, 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 they're getting greased. They're getting greased. Everyone's getting greased. And they're like, just shut up, take a blind eye to it. This is how, like he said, like Steve said, you got to play the game. 
you gotta stay playing the game. If you keep playing the game and, and, and you do what you're supposed to do, you'll be fine. But if you don't, you're out of here. We'll get rid of you. One of the I things that I, I did, I'm trying, I was trying to figure out, okay, how can I bring some of this stuff so people will look at it or think about it? So I thought, you know, the best thing to do is uh, just an open survey, no names, nothing. So I had 351 individual responses. Uh, in that survey, 78.2% uh, okay. of the kids were taken for neglect, a very mm. vague, subjective yeah. uh, term. 51.8% uh, 50, of the accusers were social workers at a school. It's kind of that either the nurse or the social worker up to the school has one, it's dumped on. Uh, okay. Spouse was about four percent. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next one. Uh, fifty-six percent of the of the parents that uh, filled out the survey, fifty-six percent of them were uh, threatened by the CPS worker, and thirty percent were threatened by the police officers that come along with them. Yeah. Uh, only 34.1% were placed with a relative. Georgia is fantastic as a state. That's where the Child Welfare League of America has their offices. And they believe in something called kinship care. Yes. So maybe you're having a hard time, but, you, but Joss is doing well. So he's yeah. going to take your kids for a while until we get to help you get yeah, the job until they get it or figured whatever out. whatever it might be. The whole the whole point here and plan here should be to get the parents on their feet and help you know get them to a point where they could take care of their own kids get the that should together. be the point yeah this is a uh this is a female based uh attack 71 percent of the of the 351 people 70 71 percent of them were female so mm -hmm. they go after the woman they do a lot to keep that dad out of it yeah. Heck yeah. That's what they're doing with Jason. They're doing that with Jason. He said he would come when Jason was gone. Welfare. They they don't want you. They won't give welfare to a woman unless they unless the man, there's no man in the house. Yeah. So if if CPS workers are gonna go talk to, them, they're gonna bull, go bully the woman. They're gonna bully the woman and they're gonna make her give and, and say, look, this you're not capable of taking care of these kids. We're gonna take care of these kids for you. It's kind of you give it's kind of like you're not aborting the kids. But you're just giving them to the state anyways. Okay, Steve, have you yeah. ever heard of the Franklin child sex ring before? The Franklin scandal? Is that the one that was in San Diego? No, this was in Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska. It was with a I, gentleman named Larry King. Familiar. Lawrence E. King or, or Larry King. He was like a power broker, Republican. Uh, he, uh, he was like a, a CEO, or not the CEO. Um, he was like the president of this bank. And... Uh, the kids came out of a uh, boys town orphanage and Nebraska foster care system. Uh, they were being kidnapped, abused at sex parties. Um, and we actually had a show on this. I, I didn't get to get too deep into it, but uh, there was like a guy named Craig Spence. He was, he was a CIA asset. He actually had cameras all in his home. Same exact type thing as Jeffrey Epstein. This guy would have cameras in his home and then politicians would come over. They would hook up with these kids and then he would videotape it and then he would use it as blackmail on, on some of these uh, higher up politicians, which it, it's crazy because if you think about it, you know, back in the day when we used to watch like, let's say we'd watch a movie and then like uh, th th they would have pictures of like this guy hooking up with another girl. And then they would say, hey, if you don't do this, I'll show it to your wife. You can imagine how much power you have when you have uh, a picture of you hooking up with a little boy. That's different. That's like you could just crush someone's whole life like that. So. It's yeah. like they would they would use it just to get whatever they would want passed or bills passed or or uh, you know to lobby stuff like that with with all these politicians find out it's like the devil they would like give them bait like these little kids or these little girls and they would videotape it and uh, they would have these big parties what they, what he would do is he would have these big parties uh, he would throw a ele elegant parties that were super expensive. And then the people that wanted to stay afterwards for the after party, they were all the ones that would want to be, you know, doing the drugs and having all these, 
young boys or young girls around and, and uh they should and be looking would, they should be looking at what what's up with the the politicians man like get the backgrounds of what's going on these politicians where are they from where do they get raised from where that where where were they put through because if you're gonna give the most abusers have been abused so where where are these where are these politicians coming from like aren't these people supposed to be the upper echelon people that are raised to be like you know, proper and, 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 you know, go to the Ivy league schools. You got these kids, you know, you know, diddling little boys and diddling little, what are you doing, dude? Like what is going on? Did you have a dirty uncle Nate? Who knows? Let's go figure this out. Let's, let's attack the issues with the, with the politicians. Now, where, where, where are you guys getting this abuse of power from? Like to where do you think you could actually do these things, get away with it and only just to do them again? not to repent for what you're doing and stop. Like, this is weird. Like you're getting it. This is a lot of stuff that's coming from higher up, not just. Well, it wasn't just, these are like, these are this, this ended up going all the way to the white house, dude. These, this is Washington, DC. What's going on? Uh, Steve, do you remember, do you remember back when, uh, who was it? It was, uh, I know George Bush was the vice president at the time. And what happened is it was these orphanage boys that they were taking into the White House and they're giving them uh, midnight tours of the White House. And they actually wrote an article about these boys being taken in there and they felt that the article that they wrote was in the Washington Times and they felt like some foul play was happening with these boys. Like, why are you going to bring uh, these boys in at 12 o'clock at night to give them a midnight tour? And the guy that was bringing them there is this guy, Lawrence King, the gentleman that was in this uh, Franklin scandal. So, and the, and the guy, Craig Spence, the guy that I'm talking about that had all these cameras set up. So it's, uh, it gets really deep, the web, the one that, you, the, the one you're talking about is CPS doing this and, and they're connected to, but this is actually uh night in the 1980s where, where they had a boys town orphanage, which is a Catholic orphanage. Yeah. You know, that the Catholics are definitely the priests are involved in this type of stuff. Uh, the I Vatican, like they're brushing pedophilia off like nothing, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got a book over it's here deep. that I've. I've tried to read for years and it's about the Catholic priests and how many kids that they actually sexually abuse. I can get into like the first the end of the first chapter, beginning of the second, and it's so sick. I, I can't finish it. And I've seen yeah. so much in my life. It just, it's, uh, yes. Uh, there's a, uh, yeah. Well, hold on, Josh. If you do notice in the eighties, there was a lot of missing kids, you know, Missing kids everywhere, missing kids, missing, missing. But when you notice when CPS stepped in, a lot of those missing kids didn't start popping up as much. They're like, because they, they, they're probably, you know, they're like a cover front for this maybe. Because when they stay, if you look at the years and, the, and if you kind of think about it, once they stepped in, a lot of the missing kids on the back of milk cartons disappeared a lot. They really didn't have that stuff out no more. It's all handled by CPS. They, they take care of all the missing stuff. Well, I don't know if they take care of all the missing kids, but... Yeah. yeah I, well, look what Steve said. I'm looking. I'm looking for this. It was one of the things that. that oh, shoot, I, I had all my notes ready. It's okay. Uh, okay. If you want to talk about racism in this country, you need to start with CPS and foster care and those type of things. When you look at the population. I mean, if you're a black child or a Hispanic child, the odds of you being taken are much more yeah. than, than otherwise. And I had all of those statistics here, uh, but it's, it's just, I mean, it is so racist-based. Yeah, yeah, it's... Um, Standard, the percentage of you being taken because... Yeah, think about it. It's 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 there's they're, they're gonna go after that. They're gonna they're gonna take that because it's easier to do that. It's easier yeah. to do that type of stuff because those. But racism is base is you're basing decisions on the color of somebody's skin. Yeah. Okay. Is there a is there enough black and Hispanic case managers? One of the biggest problems in Arizona is getting psychologists and psychiatrists. To speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When I used to teach the behavioral health classes, I'd ask them, Do you speak Spanish? Oh, stay in the field. 
get a job, yeah. get your education. You will be, you'll always have a job because we're, yeah. we're not even close to having enough of those type of people. Yeah. Mm. So if there's a communication barrier, it's even worse, you know, because they might not even be able to understand the person and yeah. then they might just push it through, you know, and that's terrible, you know? Oh man. Yeah. This hat I'm wearing, I don't know if you can see, uh, it's SVS. Silent voices speak. Yep. Yeah. This yeah. is an organization that uh, I have been helping with. It's only been around for maybe two or three months. And they have a, a, once a month, it's be like the second Tuesday or whatever of each month, they have either me or somebody else comes and talks about whatever parents want to talk about so like we did a show uh not like this but we just did uh -huh. like a little podcast you yeah. know where parents could pull it up and it was how to survive the holidays uh -huh. your child's taken or your yeah. loved one's lost ah uh, dang man that's that's terrible yeah um well, it's so sad because it, it's possible to do this stuff right yeah. You can't get enough people. There's so what do you think, Steve? Do you think, do you think that, uh, cause if you think about it, let's say I was, uh, making tons and tons of money off child trafficking or human trafficking. You, do you think that they just go and they, they'd be like, Hey, you know what? I could try to find an insider that works, uh, that works a CPS. Maybe I could find an insider that could kind of get me, you know, do you think they, they start infiltrating these things? And, and since it's a billion dollar industry, you know, do you think they're infiltrating CPS and actually people are knowingly doing this? Yes. I'm sure, I'm sure that there are individuals in there doing that type of stuff. Yeah. They had one, one case manager and I, you know, I'll get on the internet and I'll think, well, something's not, something's fishy with this guy. So I'll look him up on the internet. Well, I got onto like Facebook or one of those things. Well, this case manager for CPS was was working not working playing with having sex with animals oh geez reality. So he, he okay. wrote an article and it was published back east somewhere massachusetts or somewhere nobody wanted to hear anything about it at cps or the mm -hmm. governor's office or anywhere they don't want to hear about this stuff they have a that's another thing i want to make sure we talk about the system, people say, oh, the system's broke. No, it's not. The system works exactly the way government and these people want it to work. Okay? It's not broken. Yeah. I get so agitated because people, well, well, it's broken. We need more money. Well, maybe they need more money, but it's not broken. You have a system where you're taking these kids, 78% by it for neglect. Yeah. Well, did you get your Cheerios today? Oh no, I haven't had cereal for a month. You know, and then they take that and run with it. Yeah. Dang, that's interesting. I never even thought about this. And I have kids, so now I have a two-year-old and a you know and a one-year-old. So well, dude. So say you have check this out. So say you have a kid, your kids are at home, you're homeschooling them, right? Your neighbor sees you with your kids at home every day. They'll call CPS and say, hey, this guy's not, you know, saying his kids to school. They'll come knocking on your door, dude. And they'll, believe me, you can say no to let them in, but the cops will be with them. And they'll open the door and they'll say, let us in. Now this is a, 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 an issue. Let me see how you're teaching your son what, or your daughters. What school are they going to? What, what's, and you're like, I homeschool them. Well, what curriculum do you teach them? Let me see the da, 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 da. What do you, how are you teaching? How, oh, how come, this, dude, boom, you're screwed. Do you know what case pushed that? Probably. My family is, seriously, you're in the system right there. Now they're coming to your house once every three weeks. You know, what's your kid doing? What, have you got him in school yet? Why is he in school? Why is he in school? Put him in the school. Put him in your life. I don't want to do that. Well, what's up with your, is your daughter's, are your kids vaccinated? They're gonna start. That's, they're gonna start pushing that issue. That's next. No, that's what I was talking about. What's so, on, why aren't you? Nathan, what are, the, the Turpin. Have you heard of uh, the Turp? That's uh, David and uh, Louise Turpin. They 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 were in Paris, California. They, in 2018, they.
they had these kids um, ranging from, they had 13 kids basically ranging from two years old all the way to 29. And they were, they were chaining their kids to the bed. They were buying a bunch of gifts and toys, but never letting the kids play with it. They weren't feeding the kids, uh, all this stuff. It, it was like they were torturing the children, right? And they were homeschooling the kids. And the, and the husband, David Allen Turpin, he filed to be a principal of the homeschool the, where he was homeschooling his kids. So they, they, uh, this type of thing, some people feel like this type of thing happened in, in order to push what you're speaking of right now where they're going in your house to find out what curriculum you're teaching and to find all that stuff. This thing right here was really big, dude. It was actually on the news. I mean, it got huge uh, media coverage. Uh, even the court case got media coverage. Um, but they feel some of the people feel like this might have been something that pushed exactly what you're talking about, where they were not, now they're coming into the home uh, because this person was homeschooling these kids and not, you know, he was just, they were just being total Satanists with the kids though, you know. Uh, torturing them and doing stuff like that. So this pushed that to the forefront, what you're speaking of right now. Now, if you, you keep your kids at home, now they want to, now they have uh, more rights to go into your home to check on it because of that case right there. More well, than one of the things rights you want to, you. You want to look and find what the laws are in your state. Yes. There's little nuances. For example, in Arizona, we're a one party state. So if you and I are having lunch somewhere, I can record you and I don't have to tell you. Oh, okay. I could be in a meeting and other people are there. I don't have to tell anybody. I'm one party. I know, I know I'm recording. Okay. Yeah. Other states are a two-party state where if you're going to tape somebody, you have to tell them, you know, I'm taping this conversation. So we both know. That yeah. way you can say, well, no, I'm not doing this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But that's a you know, find out what your capability is. And like in special ed. A lot of times kids get short sheeted because they, they have a hard time getting physical therapists, speech therapists, all those different other things that happen and they're expensive. So they get, uh, you know, the kids are not getting those services. Yeah. It, and so you got to find out uh, what's going on. But I could go on for hours about, like there was yeah. a case here that I worked on. Uh, a bus driver in one of the elementary schools had been molesting a little girl. She was the last one to get off the bus. Mm. Well, the little girl came home one day and the father and mother, what is going on? Well, she finally, she told what's going on. But by the time they called the, they called the school, by the time they got to the school, the tapes on the bus were erased. Oh. So this guy, you know, he left the district, but God only knows where he's at in the United States. Yeah, jeez. You know, uh, but uh. the school districts, so there was, a, again, some of the racism. I had a, a mom, a black mom, and she had three sons, single mom. And one of those was like seventh grade, but he, the kid was kind of wiry. You know, he's just one of those kids that just kind of skinny and wiry uh -huh. and stuff. Well, they pantsed him. Okay, uh -huh. took his shoes off, took his pants off in front of everybody at this junior high. Nothing happened. Nobody uh -huh. wanted to talk about it. Nobody to deal with it. She finally moved up to Washington. And I still, I mean, a lot of these parents that I've helped over the years, they'll send me a little note or, hey, I saw uh -huh. this. I think it's out of you. And so, uh -huh. yeah. Well, it's amazing that you helped, you know, all those people out, you know, and, uh, it's crazy. Any any more connection you can have towards uh like CPS with the uh you know the trafficking or anything like that or do you, do you have any more examples of that or well that was it's hard to tie it together yeah. exactly. So That's what, what I'm saying. I tried. I was trying. Number, like there's two hundred and what did I say? Two hundred. Is that two hundred eighty one or something? And and yeah, 30, 30 kids are missing. Where are those kids? Yeah. How do, we don't know. So they try to say they ran away. 80% of them are yeah. being trafficked. Yeah. So yeah. that's that means that, you know, out of that 250, probably close to 100 are being trafficked. Yeah. And that's that shouldn't be happening at all. And, like, where's, where's the investigations into that, you know? Yeah. And I mean, if you're going to take my child, you damn well better take, take care, care of them. them. 
Yeah, so like as if it was your own. Something and now you're, you're getting molested yeah. in the home or by the therapist oh. or physician. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, we're gonna have to pray for all this man and yeah. uh, put it in god's hands man like like we talked about in the very beginning of the podcast you know like you're better off to have a millstone around your neck so you guys will definitely be uh definitely be judged for what you guys are doing you know anybody that's doing that so but back to this silent voices speak i'll send you the the link okay maybe you could share it with people and uh for sure send me the link so I can put it small you. just starting out but okay. they're having a, there's a theme to each time they meet. And okay. I do a lot of the, the PowerPoints and that type of stuff. I think okay, I sent sure. you a PowerPoint, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You did. And I have it on my, on my phone. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, well, let's do this. Uh, send me that uh, via email as soon as I get off the, uh, as soon as I get off of this. And that way I can put it on the link for uh, YouTube. Okay. All right. We'll right All right. Away. Anything else you want to talk about on here, Steve? Or are we good? No, just thank you, gentlemen. This is, it is so thank hard because the media, they don't want to do this. No. I know. I, I honestly was researching everywhere, everywhere trying to find a connection. Good platform. To, this, this, this is our platform to get everything off, man, off our chest and get off our yeah. there and people can do what they want with it. You know, that's what, that's what I want to do. That's what we like to do out here. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, in Ephesians, it's talking about expose evil, you know, like, uh, it's uh let me just pull it up real quick and have no fellowship with the unfruitful workness of darkness but rather uh, reprove them or expose it so that's what we try to do on here you know so that's how we do this uh before i tell you talk to you outside this josh sometimes it just gets so mad you can't because you can't do more about it because no one's really, no one's getting together and doing more about this stuff. They, people got to start, it's got, you guys keep putting it in front of people's faces and keep making them see what the real evil is out there. And, and, and hopefully one day they, people start to turn and see more of this stuff and start to see that it's. And so. I, I'm lucky because I, most of my grandkids are older. Yeah. <laughs> They're in the high school, the Marine Corps, whatever. So, you know, my daughter had a baby, and I, you know, and I told him, I said, I don't care if I have to get another job, collect cans, do not ever send them to a public school. Mm. You know, we're getting hundreds of thousands, I think it was 169,000 kids crossed from Mexico or, or further across the border. No grades, no, no uh, shot records, no medical records. They don't know anything about them. Yeah. You know, and it's not the kids' fault. Yeah. Somebody should have been watching this and seeing. But these kids, there's no, you know, mumps, measles, rubella, uh, smallpox, all of the shots that a kid gets. You guys know yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, they're not, they don't have those, and they're going to be sitting and working with and playing with your the other kids. Yeah. Uh, somebody should have been doing something to help those kids and those families. Rather than just kind of dump them into a school district. Yeah, it's, so, it's uh, yeah. System is pretty crazy right now. All right, yeah. well, we're going to end the podcast. We're going to end this in prayer like we always do. And we're going to put it up to God. Um, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're talking about some subjects that we, we need you to definitely, uh, you know, please help out these, these kids that are in foster care. Please help out these CPS workers that are trying and 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 do and do care. You know, help them to be able to handle the workloads. Uh, the people that are that are not dedicated, get these weed them out, Lord. Please get them out of there. Uh, get people that are dedicated to their job, that care about these kids, about their well being. Uh, please help some of these investigators and and detectives look into these cases if there's if there's uh, trafficking going on uh, in a place where they're supposed to be protected. Uh, CPS is child protective services, Lord. We need them to be protected, not the kids to be protected, not trafficked and in, 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 in foster homes that are where molestations going on. Lord, please keep the devil out of this, these homes uh, and, and keep the devil out of the homes before they even get put in foster care. Help the people that are addicted to drugs. Help them get off of drugs, Lord. We put it all in your hands, Lord, and we appreciate everything you do for us. Thank you for this good connection and thank you for connecting us with Steve. Help him with his book sales. Help him with his health. Help his family with his health and uh, keep them all healthy for the holidays. We appreciate everything you do for us, Lord, and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Yep. And have a Merry Christmas. You too. Yeah. Yeah. You guys enjoy yourself and have a great time this, uh, this holiday and happy new year to you. And uh, thank you audience flying over your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Thank you audience for listening. Please subscribe to YouTube and share it to everybody you can. We love you guys. Thank you.